Okay. We want to solve for the internal loadings at C, meaning FX, FY, FZ, MX, MY, MZ. I want all six of those. Let's, let's, let's solve for all six of those. All right. So I need to cut it. All right. Cut it right there and keep one half for the other. All right. Uh, if I were to keep what's happening at A, first I would need to solve for what's happening at A. Uh, but if I keep this, uh, I think I'm just going to keep that part of it because there's no pins, no bolts, no rockers, rollers, anything. So I don't really have to solve for any supports if I keep the kind of the free end that actually has the 600 Newton force. So I'm going to keep this force. I'm going to attempt to draw this in 3d. So this is kind of coming over here. Okay. And then I'm, I'm, I'm cutting it right here, or I guess it's circular. So I'm cutting it right there. All right. <clears throat> right where I cut it, I need to draw uh, FX. Fy, Fz, and do you see that I'm not really worried about positive sign convention? I'm just drawing them in the positive x, y, z directions. All right, and then I need a moment. Mx, I need a moment. I kind of have this double arrow. My, and a moment. MZ. Those are my six unknowns. All right, and then I've got this force right here. Let me go and break this up into its components. Oh, do y'all remember this from statics? Those are spherical angles. I know all my students remember that. So you're prepared to say, uh, let's see. I think of spherical as two two-dimensional problems. So first of all, this would be 600 cosine 60. This would be 600 sine 60. And then I would break this 600 cosine 60 into its two components, 600 cosine 60 um, sine 30 and 600 cosine 60 cosine 30. And so then I can get rid of that. So, so do you see that? Can you break a force into its X, Y, Z components? If you can't go back to statics to, to review that, you don't have to go back all the way. Right. But review that from statics. All right. So, and uh, let me make sure I did this right. Yeah. So this one right here in the Y, is 260. So this is 260. This right here is 150. And this right here is 520. So let me draw that over here. So instead of drawing that 600 Newton force at a 60, 30 spherical angle problem, let me say, all right, that force is 260. Newtons in the Y, uh, 150 Newtons in the negative X, and 520 Newtons in the Z. Okay, I haven't really done anything yet. I mean, I, I've cut it and I drew FX, FY, FZ, MX, MY, and Z, and then I just, I just drew all the, the forces that were acting on it. All right, so now I can solve for fx, fy. I can solve for those six unknowns using my six equations. So let's sum the forces in x. Sum the forces in x. I would say negative 150. Actually, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let, let, I'll show you how I like to do these. I'm going to sum the forces in x. I'm going to sum the forces in y. I'm going to sum the forces in z. All right, so I've got that internal FX right here in the X direction. I've got that internal FY 
right here in the y direction and the internal fz right there in the z direction okay but also in the x direction i have negative 150 and that's it in the y direction i have 260 and in the z direction i have 520 all right so so just you know sum up all the forces in x direction sum up all the forces in y direction sum up all the forces in all three directions equal to zero and then solve so fx is 150 fy negative 260 fz is negative 520 and th those are my three internal forces all right does that make sense and could you have done that without summing the forces equal to zero these three internal forces are the internal forces that counteract all the external forces does it make sense that at the cut you would need a 150 in the positive x to counteract that that 150 negative does it make sense you need an, a negative 260 uh, in the negative y direction to counteract so so the sum of all the forces at the cut are zero because these three internal forces at the cut are counteracting all the external forces. Okay, that, that was easy. All right, the moments is what, what we need to really focus on. All right, let's sum the moments in the X direction. Let's sum the moments in the Y direction. Let's sum the moments in the Z direction. All right, I, I like to sum the moments about the cuts. All right, and I have an internal MX, an internal MY, an internal MZ. Right, I've got, you know, I mean, I, I drew them, right? I've got an MX in the X direction, I have an MY in the Y direction, I have an MZ in the Z direction, okay? Then I need to think about how these three forces, or any forces, do those create any moments about my cut? Do those create any moments about my cut? Technically, you could think about doing like an R cross step. I don't, I don't do that. <clears throat> if, you really, if you really can't visualize these moments, then maybe you should think about um, how, to, how to do R cross F mathematically. Uh, but I just think about these moments and their moment arms. What type of rotation what type of moment, for instance, what type of moment would this 260 Newton force cause about the cut? What type of moment would this 260 Newton force cause about the cut? Well, there are two moments that it causes. All right. I think the easiest one to see is that this would cause this rotation right it would kind of bend over and it would cause a rotation about the x-axis yeah 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 almost like screwing that that pipe in yes yes a 260 newton force would cause this rotation about x okay uh so it would be 260 so first of all it'd be in the x direction it would be 260. What would its moment arm be? It's perpendicular 500 millimeter moment arm right there. Uh, but would that be positive, a positive rotation in the X or a negative? Use, use your right hand, yeah, and you could, good, good. No, no, your thumb would be pointing in the negative X direction. So I've got this negative right here. All right. Then another thing to think about is this 260 was in the Y direction. That moment arm was a Z dimension. Does that make sense that a force in the Y that is offset in the Z would create a moment in the X? Right? It's like the cross product. Um, you know, it's in the other direction. All right. Now, I don't know if you can see this, though, but that 260 has another moment arm. It is in front of the cut by 150, right? It is in front of the cut by 150, 
All right. It's in the y direction. It's in front. It, it, it kind of has an another a different moment arm that's an x moment arm. Do you see that because it's in front, it would cause a rotation? It would cause a rotation about the z axis. It would cause a rotation about the z axis. All right. So this 260 that has a 150 millimeter moment arm, uh, it's in the y direction. Uh, it has a moment arm that was in the X would create a Z moment. Would this be positive or negative Z? Well, it's in front of it and it's pointed to the right. Can you imagine how this rotation, using my right hand, how my thumb would be pointed in the positive? So this would be a positive Z moment. This would be positive Z. All right, so every force can have two moments that it causes if it has a moment arm in you know in this case the force was in the y it was offset in the z which i think is easiest to see but it was also offset in the x uh, so it creates two moments okay so that's just that one force let's look at the next force and i really drew wildly onto let's look at this 150 Let's look at this 150. What type of rotation would this cause? The first thing that I'm seeing is it's kind of pushing over top of the cut. It's 50 mil, 500 millimeters above the cut, pushing back that way. That would cause this rotation about the y-axis. All right, 150. Uh, that's 500 millimeters above using my right hand that would cause rotation my thumb is not pointed in positive y it's pointed in negative y <clears throat> let me see if that makes sense I've, I've got the force is in the x the moment arm is in the z yeah that would create a y rotation okay but not only is it for 500 millimeters above the cut it's also uh, it has a moment arm of 400. It's 400 millimeters to the right. So if I've got a force right there that's to the right, it would cause, right, it would cause it to rotate about the Z axis again, about the Z axis. So 150, 150, a moment arm of 400. 150, the moment arm of 400 would cause a rotation in Z, positive Z. Yeah, positive Z. So do you see how that 150 creates two moments? Because it's in the X direction, and it won't create any rotation in the direction that it is going. So a, a force in the X will never create a moment in the X. Okay? But a force in the Y could create an X. So a force in the X created a, a Y and a Z moment because it was offset in both of those. Okay. Now, I, every force can create two moments. Sometimes it only creates one if it's only offset in one direction. All right. Now let's look at this uh, 520. If we've got 520 going straight up. Which, which, which type of rotation do you see? First, I'm seeing this X rotation. If, we, if it's pointed straight up and it's 400 millimeters to the right, it would cause this rotation in the positive X direction. All right, so <clears throat> I'll use a different color. 520, that is 400 millimeters away, would cause a positive positive x rotation it's in the z and it's offset in the y <clears throat> and then the other one because it's in front of because it's in front of the cut by 150 because it's in front of the cut by 150 this 520 
moment arm of 150 would create, all right, it's kind of going up and over, up and over, a negative Y. Does that make sense? A Z moment with an X offset would create a Y, sorry, Z force with an X moment arm creates a Y moment. All right, I do those by visually looking at them, using my right hand, thinking about the, their moment arm. All right, you don't, you can't visualize that. And let's practice a little bit. You'll do one in recitation. We're gonna do one more. You're gonna have some for homework. If you can't visualize that, then you do need to kind of go back to statics and think about R cross F and kind of let the cross product and let the math do that this for you. Okay, so we'll set these equal to zero. All right, set, set these equal to zero and solve for mx, negative 77.9 newton meters or newton millimeters? I've got newton meters here. Um, yeah, because I think these values are, are a lot larger. Uh, so I changed it to from millimeters to meters. My 153 newton meters and mz negative 99 newton meters.